What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am BDLM coming with my buddy J4Y, bringing you episode number 110 of the Dota On Demand podcast. What is going on, man? <sighs> We're here. We're finally here. We made we made it to a patch. We might have missed one or two in the past, but we are here with a nice, beautiful one that I think will just make up for all the ones we have missed in the past. It is a glorious patch filled with a lot of interesting things, um, plenty of discussion to be had. Um, so I'm in a very good mood. We even get started earlier tonight. I know for an audio listener that literally means nothing. <laughs> But for everyone who's going to join us live, uh, we are an hour earlier because we just have so much to cover that we're like, we don't want to stay up too late or we're going to turn to a pumpkin. So yes. uh, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, I have to say, uh, probably more for people in the United States watching the news, uh, I have to say yesterday, my hometown, I grew up in, I live in currently, started rioting like crazy, but a Dota patch came out. <laughs> I'm not saying it was a good day. I'm just saying it could have been worse. Could have been worse. Okay. At least I had Dota to bring it up a bit. Um, but here we are tonight to talk about this patch. As you said, we're getting started early because it's going to be a long one. I think the last one we did was like three hours or something. But also because of that, what we're going to try to do is break this down into about three episodes. So we're going to go through some general stuff, go through the general gameplay changes, take a break, come back five minutes later on the live stream to go into the heroes, and then again for the item changes, so that way you guys that are just listening to the audio can go back, sort of break it up in smaller pieces, and hopefully it's a little bit easier to digest. Yeah. Um, because we also, I mean, we even got to touch a little bit, Jay, on the fact that the uh, Dota professional season just got a lot crazier. We got, they listened to our episode, first of all. They did. I mean, clearly. Clearly, that's what happened. Them and Puppy both. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, still, does. He, well, he still listens to this day. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it was actually, it was just, it was perfect timing. And, I mean, obviously, we were not the only ones in on that conversation. You know, it was, uh, we kind of, it spurred off of uh, a lot, I believe it was, or some crazy Russian. And, it, you know, <laughs> one of them. Uh, but uh, it, it spurred off that, and we were, you know, kind of just wanted to get into it a bit. We had that nice lengthy discussion about the pro scene in general and what can be done and who's uh, who's in charge, who should have the power to make changes. And sure enough, uh, as Valve generally always does um, in the ways they do it, they, they kind of are like behind the scenes, not releasing any information until, you know, they're really ready and they have a clear decision and direction to go. So... Uh, as you said, it's called the uh, the Dota Major Championships. Uh, not a lot of info, of course, has been shared. It's more of just like, here's what we're thinking, and we will have more details announced as we approach uh, this format. Obviously, I think everyone's eyes are still set on the international at the moment, uh, as it well should be. So, you know, you know, obviously this should be more of like a back burner thing at this point in time. But it is really interesting to see that they, they did listen to both the community and the pro scene and everyone else. And they are making steps to, uh, or taking steps, I should say, to some kind of real format. Yeah, you know, we actually, this came out and then we're like going to go and update the question of the week for like, you know what, let's... Leave it up there. We didn't actually change it from the last episode, just to see if we would get some more input on, you know, who do you think is responsible for uh, managing the pro scene? And all of the votes were like, yeah, Valve, 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 Valve. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call. Dota will be there. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, yeah, that just happened. <laughs> and I, um, you know, again, I, I'm really curious to see how this turns out. I really hope. You know, like I'd mentioned previously, it'd be nice if they were able to sort of go to major tournaments in different regions because they do say that the teams will be competing at premier venues around the world. So this is going to go a little bit more global and not just be in the Americas. Um, I, I hope that they're able to take the other major organizations that are out there, make them sort of a part of this in some way so that it's not like, well, guess what, guys? There are four major tournaments. Good luck planning your lands around this. Hopefully there's some conversation and some cohesion that makes this just, uh, yeah, I guess, the, the keystones of Dota throughout the course of the year. Well, that's just it. You see the uh, the trophies, fall, winter, spring, are just normal cups. Then summer is that ages, meaning everything leads to the international, meaning that there's got to be some kind of way these are all intertwined. And maybe it will finally give that, um, I would say, 
I always say the wrong one. I was going to say mm-hmm. opaqueness. Mm-hmm. Oh. Is that well, the one you see through? The or word no? is opacity. Okay, Trans- opacity is fine. Transparency? Transparency is what I wanted. I always say yep. the wrong one. So, and I even said the wrong word, so it's just perfect. Uh, but yes, uh, transparency, because uh, we've all, all kind of had that, that question, you know, where where do they get these ideas for invitations? You know, how do they decide who goes qualifiers, who gets direct? You know, it's always kind of been just a, a questionable thing, and maybe this will uh, help shed some light on that. Um, you know, it's a, a, another key thing, just that there will be limited trade periods. So, um, you know, every, everyone knows about the scramble before TI every international there's always that scramble lock in your teams you've got to be set by april or may or whatever you know they they know their deadlines and they know they got to get in there to have a chance at at least the qualifier invitations um so you know this is actually going to hopefully part of the issue that we brought up was there's no team cohesion there's no unity there's no loyalty teams are just made to try to be like all-stars and just try to get there and now maybe with this limited trading period um maybe that'll kind of keep teams force them to be together more often or actually make those selections matter a lot more than just throughout the year seeing what works and finally you know putting a couple coconuts together at the end of the year and uh flying away with them so yeah and you know i mean if each of these have a trade window too then you know fine if you really decide that you need to to mix up your roster go for it you know maybe you miss the fall cup we'll go for winter and you know i guess depending on how all these all interlock you know that might uh you know, affect your shot at the Aegis, but, you know, I can't imagine that a team breaking up in fall is going to be out of the running, uh, you know, to be directly invited. Mm-hmm. So I, it just sounds like it's going to be uh, really in line with what everybody has been sort of requesting, and it's good to see that Valve is moving in that direction and, um, you know, taking the lead to, to help the players and the organizers and all of us fans get through the, the, Dota, the Dota tournament scene. So, yes. <sighs> I think it's time jay can we what oh go I was ahead say can we no i was gonna say can we can we get into this beautiful enchantress picture yet um an interesting picture and i guess maybe once we go through the gameplay updates general stuff we can maybe uh throw out some uh, opinions mm-hmm. on the enchantress the chen hanging out in the back trying to not look creepy but <laughs> it's a little weird uh there are a lot of really big changes. Uh, I think a lot that people have been bringing up recently. For instance, a lot of the Westerners, especially from uh, recent tournaments, have spent a lot of focus. Ice 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 even mentioning, like, I think these Western teams are just, like, way too much into this rubber band Dota thing. It's really not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Maybe speaking a bit of hy- in hyperbole uh, at the end of the Star Ladder land finals. But... Uh, what do you know? We wind up coming into this patch 6.84, and uh, what do you know? The AOE bonus gold component based on team net worth difference was reduced by 25%. The XP component based on team XP difference reduced by 40%. So the rubber band gets stretched out a little bit further. Giggity. Um, <laughs> and now, by the way, hero kills are worth 10% more. Um, so we're seeing that there's just sort of like a little bit more of a step back from the rubber bands. And this is really just the beginning of the goal changes. I feel like this patch is really dramatic uh, and the amount that gets affected. I don't know if you feel the same way. Absolutely. It, it's it's definitely uh, beyond the hero and items, as you're kind of alluding to, I think, is that, uh, you know, I mean, it's not like a, they changed a Roshan pick kind of a change, but it's more of how the uh, actual game progresses. That's kind of what their focus was on a lot of these changes. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, and uh, while some numbers may look not so important, um, I think when you put it all together, stack it up, that's where you'll really see these big differences and uh, maybe different styles will kind of develop and come out of it. Yeah, I agree. And I think what we're going to see by the time we go through all this is just that the way that teams have been thinking, I think it's going to get completely shattered. Because just going on some more, you wind up having the, your uh, lane creeps. Their value comes down uh, from 6.257%. Um, you also have hero kills becoming 10% more valued. Worth. Um, <laughs> worth. Yes, terribly worded. Hero <laughs> kills are now worth 10% more. Um, you also have the Raxes becoming more valuable. It becomes easier to push down your Tier 2 and 3 towers because the armor is reduced on those buildings. 
Um, you know, I, I really get the sense that what people have been saying so much has sort of gotten through because it is the like, oh, it's impossible to push high ground. All you got to do is defend the base like one time and then you just swing and the rubber band snaps back. I think everything is really starting to calm down here. Yes, exactly. And I, I'm so curious. I, I have not gotten a chance to play the new patch yet as it did just occur. Um, and as you said, there have been kind of some events going on in this uh, area, but I'm definitely interested to see in our own personal games how, how that affects these certain picks. You know, there are certain heroes where you were almost afraid or, like, didn't want to select them purely on the fact that you would build up this net worth. I'll just use Alchemist. He's a very easy example. Where he gets his... The whole point of him, I want to say, at least in the carry role, is he builds up this huge net worth early because he can farm, out-farm, and get or I should say get gold faster than any other hero. And now he gets his huge net worth, but if he gets a death early on with this much bigger net worth, that rubber band effect allowed these other team to really have a nice, stronger comeback, and therefore you would really kind of avoid that selection. And it, he wasn't the only one. You know, it kind of just changed uh, a lot of uh, picks and bands and different things. So uh, to kind of step back from that rubber band approach and say, you know, I, I think this is ultimately... What everyone was looking for i was really happy to see that experience took a bigger hit than gold because i think that was part of it i brought up in the past was that experience was still huge they reduced the gold in that one patch uh and made it not nearly as significant but experience didn't nearly get hit as hard and there were still huge experience swings um coming off some of these kills so yeah i'm, I'm absolutely uh i'm really happy to see that's the direction they take of course the whole community i feel like was uh on that boat but uh i'm also curious to see how some of these other changes like for example uh how the aoe bonus gold is distributed or increased decrease depending on your rank and those uh different changes that we see here so uh you know it'll be interesting to see like does that really uh, aid your supports or your your carries like who is that really benefiting which side it's all gonna be an interesting uh, discovery yeah, I think that's a that's another big one uh, to go off of. You know, the amount of AOE bonus gold given is now increased or decreased by up to twenty percent based on the dying hero's relative rank and net worth. So it's really not it, it is, I guess, in a sense about the gap between, but not like the size of the gap. It's really like if you are, um, you know, further ahead, you're going to give up more, um, but not like okay, well, it's ten thousand gold difference. No, here's four thousand gold. Good luck. Mm -hmm. um, you know what what top tier item would you like to purchase uh, i feel like it's a lot tamer but because you know i feel like we've had conversations where we go in theory we really don't hate this like it kind of seems like a, a decent enough idea if you have a lead i mean shouldn't you have to capitalize shouldn't you have to use it and not mm -hmm. be allowed to sit on it um so you know and having gotten to play a little bit with it you can sort of feel the difference between um getting gold from creeps versus getting gold from hero kills from being aggressive. And, uh, I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. It does feel a little different. Uh, but I think that this in the long term is going to wind up being better. Absolutely. I agree with that. And I, I think it, uh, it's kind of making the game go back to what we were more used to before this patch came out, uh, 6.83. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to take a while for, uh, us to really see how the meta shifts you know you can't overnight things don't happen you know it's it's going to be a progression it's going to be teams trying different things out seeing what works what doesn't work um you know you're going to see a lot of those popular picks even post nerf uh still for at least a while until maybe other picks start outshining them in certain strategies or comps um, so you know it'll be interesting to see how that develops as well uh, on the kind of back of the rubber band thing uh, and, and kind of talking about how different strategies or different uh, way the game play itself is getting affected. Uh, making the extra melee creep addition spawn time change, um, as well as that siege creep addition, uh, they actually lowered the time that it takes in the game to get the extra melee creep and the extra siege creep. Um, actually, for the melee creep, by a few minutes, um, and the siege only by a little bit, but still... Uh, obviously pushing for, uh, well, literally encouraging pushing and getting more uh, progression towards the enemy base. Uh, do you like that kind of change? 
I do. Um, I mean, I think it's pushing for shorter games. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's still going to be, and we'll see further along in the patch, there is totally taken into the account, like, oh, well, maybe we will still have, like, an 80-minute game, and maybe people will have the gold for a seventh item. Uh, But, you know, I don't think this is really anything to have a problem with. Um, You know, watching people farm is, I think, the least fun for anybody, Mm -hmm. probably even for the players as well. So trying to uh, move the game along a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's all bad, but, um, I, I I think it's really neat. I think it's something that sort of has to happen because, you know, I think we've all been in games that have just, like, drug on a little bit too long, a lot longer than maybe they should have, and it's like, oh, I knew this was a lost game like 20 minutes ago. And, you know, maybe you hope for the snapback, the rubber band mechanic, or maybe you hope for just a really great turnaround. You guys just, you know, outdo them in one uh, team fight. But, you know... I feel like nine times out of ten, games sort of get to a certain point, every once in a while at least, where you just go like, this could totally be over by now. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Although, we'll get to it later, but they did kind of integrate more of a farming item uh, with that Battle Fury change. We'll get into it later. Not trying to spoil, not trying to do it, but it a just... A Battle Fury change? What? Why would they do that? Yeah, it's now a ranged weapon. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, Another change I definitely had to bring up that I think was interesting um, is the buyback change. So instead of uh, temporarily preventing unreliable gold gain, it now reduces all gold gain, including hero and AoE gold, by 60%. So, do you like what they've done here? I was actually listening to Merlini talk about it a little bit, mm-hmm. and he was, was almost sort of like on the fence with it as being like a buff or a nerf. Um I kind of like that if you feel forced to buy back, the other team can't just run away and you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, you do pay yeah. a price for having to come back into the game to try to defend. Um, but, you know, it's like if you're against an enemy team that's coordinated and mobile and you buy back and they just bounce, it's like, well, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to not buy back, and then they just take your axes. Right. So it, you're still paying a penalty for having to buy back on top of the actual purchase with the gold itself um, and having to make sure you have that cushion built up. But um, it doesn't feel so damning if you do buy back and then wind up not being able to actually put it to use. Yeah, I actually completely agree with that. I was thinking in the exact same uh thought pattern there it just it it is nice to uh you know at least gain something or be able to gain something during that period because it's it especially later in the game that is a very long window where you uh are unable to uh uh gain that gold uh unreliable goal i should say um but obviously it still uh heavily impacts you it's almost like the difference this is me trying to do math which is not a great idea Uh but the difference between killing regular creeps versus uh mega creeps i I don't remember the exact ratio maybe it's not quite that but still it's it's a similar feeling where you're getting some farm but it's not going to be what it would have been obviously so I, I like the change uh, a lot, actually. I, I'm not saying it's going to heavily impact, like, if someone would make a buyback or not. Because either way, you're going to buy back in a very similar situation. If anything, I guess, this may just encourage it more frequently than instead of someone using it the very last second when they have no other options. You know, maybe you're like, okay, I can use it here to at least save the Tier 3 tower now instead of just the Raxes. And if they fall back, I'll be able to gain some kind of... Uh, gold in my favor that's true and i'm just thinking you know we're sort of uh i think a lot of the maybe complaints uh with how this meta sort of this previous meta has sort of shaken out is that you really sort of come down to a linchpin moment where everything can be made or broken almost no matter based upon what's happened previously where you go to push the high ground well if you buy back and everybody leaves, you're at an even greater disadvantage, uh, so they might just be able to come back later after picking up a couple kills, come in breach. Sucks. Mm-hmm. Or, um, you know, you're on the winning team and you wind up just getting wiped, so uh, let's not push high ground. That could suck, too. So this, I, th- I feel like, takes a little bit of that out where you can, like, oh, we'll die, I'll buy back, it sucks, but we can try to fight. It sort of diffuses this moment, makes it a little less all or nothing one way or the other which i can appreciate yeah let's uh let's keep this going i i, I was so worried our first uh part of it would be so short 
Mm. I was sorely mistaken. How could I forget the three-hour tour previously? We might call this one the three-hour tour, but uh, we'll see if we make it that far. So uh, moving along here, um, they uh, reduced bounties on, um, it looks like, a a bunch of uh, ancient slash neutral. um, Some significant, some not as much. Um, You know, health reduced as well on some of these. I mean, that's kind of just... Maybe encouraging some people to uh, not purely stay in the jungle as long or, you know, profit as much from having just like a jungler or, you know, kind of encourage people to get back in the lanes and push towers or, you know, fight it out. So, I mean, you agree with that? Yeah. And, you know, as we're I think this might be like sort of the last little bit that sort of wraps up this whole idea. And, um, you know. I've seen some uh, post people saying, like, it's the return of CIS Dota. <laughs> if anybody remembers the description of Na'Vi for, like, what was it, uh, the second international? I think it was the second one, where it's, like, Na'Vi strategy. Kill you under your towers, mm-hmm. or fight you under your towers, kill you under your towers, take your towers. Yes. This is kind of the return to that, where it's, you know, there still are some of those mechanisms, like the refreshing of the glyph once the Tier 1 is destroyed, um, you know, there still are these things that sort of try to hold you back, um, and not just Death Ball so much, but it almost feels like there are a lot of things in this patch that sort of do force that back a little bit more um, than we've seen previously. The and it's, the, it's like, it's yes. like remember the, the Pinoy games we casted, where it was just so thrilling. You're on the edge of the seat the whole time, like, why is this Quap under their Tier 3 tower at 12 minutes? It's like, I don't understand this. But yet, there he was, he died, he got the kill, but it didn't, like, rubber band or change the game drastically. You know, it was just part of the action. It was a part of the game. And, you know, yes, he should be punished for that death of the Tier 3 tower, if, especially if he was ahead. But it shouldn't be the point where now this level 3 line is level 7 with a blink dagger. Like, you know, it's got to be in some kind of measurable, uh, realistic way. So uh, I agree with you, and I like your description, bringing it back to the TI2 Navi, because that's exactly right. You know, encouraging these lane presence, encouraging... Um, fighting, you know, that's what makes the game, in my opinion, uh, a very fascinating and exciting game. Is seeing the uh, the battles, seeing the uh, how they progress, how teams coordinate and do it. Not just uh, who can uh, farm, and then one small mistake, you lose your whole base. You know, that's that's not really a, a great thing to be a spectator to or a player. I'm sure, even so, uh, definitely some positive directions there. Now, I got to ask you. Uh, you mentioned the the reductions in some of the bounty and the health of, of creeps in the jungle, and we have this wonderful picture of the enchantress in the Chen. Yeah. So you, you know there's some focus on the jungle. What do you think about these crazy little mud golems now? Uh, mm. Used to be the bane of everyone's existence. <laughs> You've never been so sad in your life as when you find these guys in your jungle. Uh, now, not so bad. Yeah, I remember seeing some video of like a shadow feed who just like, like, looked to his ally who quadra stacked, and it was all mud golems. It was just all mud golems. And the Shadow Fiend's like, raises his arms, like, what do I do? What What do I do here? Like, I don't, no one wants to fight that unless you're Axe. Axe is like, yeah, I'll take it, but who else wants to raised, go there? Raised his. Ha. <laughs> so witty. I'm only yeah. funny when I don't try to be. Remember that. So. Yeah, I do know that. <laughs> you, know, well. you know that firsthand. Oh, no. um, we've introduced a new creature because of this change to him. Um, but yes, it, how to describe, what What would you say this is similar to, the Shard Golem effect? I was thinking of a World of Warcraft reference, which obviously not everyone can relate to, where those Tectus? big golems would split. Yes. he would Tectus? S- Tectus in World of Warcraft is this big rock golem that uh, after you got his health to zero, he would then split into two, and if you kill those, they split again. So it's not quite like that, but it's a similar idea where... Um, so the mud golem now splits into two smaller mud golems called shard golems when they die. They have 30% of the original unit's health and damage and only live for 60 seconds. Um, not only is this, and by the way, the golden experience uh, for the camp remains the same. But now you have to clear, you still have to clear the shard golems to gain that full amount. Because they also give gold. So if you kill the big ones, you're not getting what you used to get from just killing the two um originally um but the other awesome thing about well there's a couple one of them is this ability they've now gained called hurl boulder which is a 0.6 second stun 125 damage 
800 range with a 30 second cooldown they do not automatically cast this this is obviously purely for people who control them or manipulate them obviously through either items or abilities uh and i might as well say the third one because i'm getting there uh no longer have spell immunity but have 50 percent magic resistance yes exactly so no they're not still not as friendly uh to just <laughs> Shadow Rays a few times, but at least it does something. Spells do something to these guys. This, uh, I mean, to, to bring back the, the image of the Chen and Enchantress, we'll actually see it with another hero as well when we go to those changes, but uh, this is, again, I feel like a part of the revival of, of pushing, and really the viability of strategies that are for pushing. You know, you go into the jungle, you're an Enchantress, a so Chen, you see the Mud Golems, you take them, whatever, you throw them in a tower, they die, well, they split. And now you have the ability to toss out these two little st uh, uh, spells for damage as well as the stun, but also you just have more bodies to throw at the tower. So, you know, where, um, you know, a while ago now we had just like the massing of creeps and Beastmaster and Vengeful Spirit to get the Aura stack. You know, it, it almost feels like that is not that exact thing, but that sort of mentality is becoming viable again, which, you know, it's like, you forget to miss these things because it's been so long. You know, you almost forget about like the mm -hmm. old metas of like the DK and the and the Dark Seer and um, you know just the crazy creep strategies. Um, and I I just like these things that sort of not push it and make it well. This is what you have to do, but make it a little bit more viable and also just mm -hmm. mix things up a little bit more. I do. I actually just I should have said this earlier, but yes, not only the Mongols but the Shard Golems also have the Hurl Boulder. So it's a lot of, I mean, they're not long stuns, granted, but they do 125 damage and that 0.6. So it'll interrupt things, channels, or just keep someone a little bit back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a very, I think, nice rework. Because, yeah, before they were just literally like a blob that you just didn't want to fight in the jungle. They, they like really serve no purpose. Every other neutral camp was so unique or did something special and brought an aura, did this or that. They, they were just lame. And now they actually... <laughs> They're, they're, they're cool. I'm very uh, very happy about that change. Now, granted, I'm not an Enchantress or Chen player myself. Yet? <laughs> Never. <laughs> uh, I will leave that to you or one of our friends that actually can use microing. I don't actually know that I have key bindings for control groups. Okay. So things that I'm going to do uh, immediately <laughs> upon... That's your housewarming gift, actually. It's your new apartment. I'm just going to break in <laughs> in the night and then uh, set up control groups for you. Oh, so, I might yeah. have mentioned that. If people are watching the video, my background is slightly different than the past. I have moved. I am farther away from BDL, and thank God. So, I mean, I'm very sad about that. But uh, anyways, so <laughs> on to, back on to the Dota topic. Uh, hero kills. Monsters keep going on the list. We're, all, we're getting through them pretty decently. Uh, hero kills achieved by units under your control now provide experience credit to your hero. Affects things like Spirit Bear... Golems, familiars, etc., getting kills. Yes, just makes sense. Very but, cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, I mean, I guess just to, to burn through some of these, yeah. some items in the shop have swapped places. Uh, so make sure you know where things oh, are. Geez. You will yes. now forever be ruined for the shop and get to appreciate <laughs> how hard it is to be a new player. And many new items. Spoiler alert: uh, that you're going to lose your mind trying mm -hmm. to figure out exactly what to do to build them and where to find the pieces so uh good luck everybody um the the one that i think i really wanted to just sort of uh highlight sort of reminds me of one in the past like when we had uh the change with composite damage mm -hmm. uh, we now have these two new terms mute and break uh this sort of define a lot of abilities moving forward which i'm just going to say off the bat i really like a lot for the same reason of uh getting rid of composite damage just as more straightforward and people understand exactly uh, what's happening here. A lot of abilities have actually just sort of been fixed to mm -hmm. fall in line so that there are fewer of these just one-off instances of when something might work and when something won't. Uh, basically, though, Mute will disable uh, the ability to cast items, whereas Break will, dis uh, will break... Um, Passives. Break will break. Break will disable the bonus of passives, uh, such as abilities. So, <clears throat> new new vocabulary to screw up now. 
Exactly. Just throw yeah. it on the fire there. Um, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, and I think the, the major thing where that kind of played into was Hex no longer applies the brake mechanic, which is just enormous in my opinion. Like a, like a small change that has kind of big implications in my opinion. Like, I'm just, the easiest couple that I can think of time I had Bristleback, number one thing that I thought right away of, uh, you know, people would hex him. He would no longer gain his Bristleback passive. He was so much easier to kill when you hexed him. Um, <clears throat> no longer the case. Uh, Faceless Void with Backtrack. Uh, PA with Evasion. I mean, the list goes on and on for people, you know, well, not on and on, but it does go on for passives. And obviously, hexing was a great way to uh, kind of deal with them, and now they took that aspect out of it. So uh, making those heroes kind of inadvertently buffed from this. Yeah, um, and, you know, I think, like, the Dodgers and stuff, especially Lion uh, takes a hit from this, as oh, yeah. does Shadow Shaman for no longer being able to uh, apply the Hex mechanic to, to do this on their own. So, um, like you said, it's sort of something that you can... I mean, it's a lot of words just sort of thrown out there and just go, like, okay, I don't really know that. It, it really is a pretty big change, um, and it'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see how that actually... Uh, affects games because so, I'm sure there's going to be a time where Bristleback sneaks out with just so a little you, bit of health. You've got to position yourself around that uh, sheep or chicken uh, mm -hmm. very well still. It's very important. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, sheep's wool is itchy. You know, you got to attack it from the right angle. Mm -hmm. And chickens, something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess, I feel like those are the big ones. Is there anything else that you really wanted to um pick on i mean we're as we go through this we're not gonna be hitting all of them we do have right. some that we're actually planning on skipping because they're kind of small yes. um so these are not all of the changes you can of course go to the dota 2 blog dota2.com and you can just do slash 684 if you want to go straight to the list of changes if you want to see every single one um did you have anything else that you wanted to i had one thing i did want to bring up because i saw okay. this that was i thought pretty neat that may get changed may not um, but there is a note about the following abilities no longer ignoring units classified as ancients. Um, there's a whole paragraph. There's a million of these spells. One thing I definitely saw that I thought was interesting is Necrophos, with Heartstopper Aura, which is listed under that, can now stand in a point on Dire from right in the beginning of the game, and he can simultaneously kill Ancients and Roshan by himself um, just by standing there. Um, he can also stack the creep wave from there. Actually, I'm going to pull it onto my other screen so people can see I have some images pulled up. If you go to watch the YouTube video, which you should anyways, um, also on our dotonman.com. But yes, uh, you'll see, and I believe they have some interesting notes down here. Roshan will die between four and a half and five minutes, depending how quickly you got in position. Um, so you will have, also you will become level seven, assuming you did everything else as he said. <laughs> Uh, and he says, what else does it say? You should be able to get a, uh, roughly a blink dagger at five minutes. So there's that. This is where people find these changes and just find ways to break it. You know what I mean? And it's good for them to do this because then Valve's like, oh, we didn't intend that. Let's, uh, let's make some quick changes real quick. Uh, this one involves using a quelling blade to chop some trees down to get in this perfect spot that hits both Roshan um an ancient now obviously it's like a very slow kill of these units because it's hard stop aura so it's over time which means there are ways obviously like someone could just go up from the other team and whack for a last hit or something but at the same time it's just kind of an interesting concept that it just got developed i mean do you think there's any more of those kind of things that out there or what do you think oh. about that one in general I, I'm sure there are. I mean, I've I went on Reddit real quick before the show, and I got to see some things. Like, I believe there's a bug with, like, Doom eating the the mud golem. Um, oh. There's there are a couple that are out there. Mm -hmm. I believe there's something weird with Rubik interacting with Nyx Assassin as well. So there there are some weird um, oh, interactions that I'm sure have to be sorted out. But you know, just go back, going back to talking about just how exciting this patch is. There is just so much that has changed pretty dramatically um, that, you know, these things are bound to, to pop up. And, you know, honestly, if this patch stayed on test for a week or so, just so that people could find all this stuff out, I frankly wouldn't mind. Um, and, you know, I'm sure the teams in the meantime can uh, start to fantasize about the, the wonkety strats that they want to employ 
Um, I do, though. Okay, maybe I should have given you some warning on this. Great. <laughs> because I actually wrote it out in the paragraphs. So, uh, just as before we break the, the first part of the yes. VOD slash audio up, old meta versus new. Uh, and you're welcome to throw out stuff from what we're going to be talking about later. It's just a little bit of a teaser, if you like. Uh, how would you compare the two? And I'll actually, I'll give you my answer first, so you have some time, and you can just contribute, or, you know. Your, or just nod my head and smile. Or just be like, yeah, probably all that stuff. Um, here, here I go. So, one thing that I mentioned previously is that you have this, like, hard countering of masses of damage with stats, BKBs versus Pierce, um, taking bonus damage and just tanking up enough to deal with it. There's the fear of the high ground and supports who have been mentioned by casters to just have really tough times transitioning to late game, which has really sort of uh, brought the hero pool uh, down a bit, I feel like. You know, no more CMs, these heroes that maybe were strong really early on but tend to fall off later. And, you know, we've even seen some games with Chens where just towards the middle late, you're like, why are you still here? Um, Mask of Madness obviously being a big part of that. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, the Western scene in particular focusing on the rubber band, um, the hero pool staying stagnant despite the fact that, mind you, in the Star Ladder Finals, we got to see a couple of Asian teams stand toe-to-toe and actually bring out a whole cast of different uh, characters. Uh, but there was sort of also just a feeling of uh, needing to, to back off and farm your way back to a bigger lead. Agree, disagree? Want to add anything else? Wow, you Lots of words. Such a such a wordsmith over there. It took me years to come up with that. I hope you had like cue cards or something because that was uh, that was pretty phenomenal. Um, I I just think this is going to bring really a breath of fresh air. And actually, that's kind of I was going off someone in the chat powerhouse, but uh, it, it really is going to bring in this new. Uh, I mean, not that everything's so stale because this patch has been around a while, but it's not been like eternity it's just been more of like how the meta has been you know it's, it's been this uh especially the pub scene in particular um you know i've seen ho ho ha ha too many times for a lifetime most hap but uh most hap i don't know if that's a word or not but uh it's not usually uh, things i say are not words but uh i i definitely i just i think it's going to bring in so many more elements we have never seen this many items too get introduced mm-hmm. and i think that's gonna bring such a huge new dynamic because some of these items, a lot of them were kind of uh, like next stages of items that were nice in the early game, but like you said, didn't transition well. It's almost kind of also part of a theme is like heroes or items that didn't transition or translate to a later part of the game. Now you see these bigger, better items and it kind of all flows well, especially I feel like supports got a lot of help this patch personally um, through different ways, through heroes and items. Um, I think that's going to help them dramatically. It might even make playing a support more enjoyable in general. Um, I think it puts some more interesting twists on items that really kind of were one-dimensional, and now they have, uh, you know, you can use them offensively, defensively. There's different ways like that, too. I'm, I'm just really excited to get into that down the road. But overall, like I said, my opinion, a new breath of fresh air and just uh, going to be so happy to not see Sniper, hopefully, as much as we see him now. Yeah, I mean, for for just what I have sort of picked up as being big parts of this patch in general, including the stuff we haven't talked about yet, there's the, the gold generation that's focused much more on kills as opposed to farming neutrals and creeps. Supports are given inventory space, and um, in the items that they're able to get now are given... Uh, unique bonuses to be able to apply themselves and to allies. Um, there are more than just stat counters now because as we go later on and look at the items, they're just um, the bonuses that some of these items provide are really more about you know true strike, strike versus evasion, um, about having your abilities up and available more often, about providing more magic resist overall. Um, a lot less about just the um, you know, Pierce BKB or vulnerability and vulnerability kind of deal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I've kind of, there are a couple changes in this pad log, cover yours, little oh. ones, that might nod or borrow from games such as League of Legends, <sighs> Smite, 
Heroes of the Storm. Ooh. I know it hurts. It hurts. God, it hurts. But <laughs> what I'd like to say in, in I guess, a uh, preview of that is that I think that all of those things that were borrowed or added to this to Dota 2 now actually increase the skill cap, were adjusted very well for Dota 2, and I think we're done in a really uh, interesting way that has me even more excited now that those things are a part of the game. And that's not just because I'm wall trash, I promise. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, it, it it definitely adds a, it, like another dimension, another another thing that can uh, be built towards that can impact in a, just a different light, in a different way. Uh, uh, Erica, I'm gonna call her that because that is her name, and that she's in the chat with us as well. Uh, sorry, it's not last name. We're good. Uh, we're Gucci, but uh, she was asking, uh, was the patch before last CI this big? Um, it was big, but it wasn't. Uh, I don't want to say it had a, nearly a similar impact as this one did. Um, I feel like this is going to change things a lot more now. Thankfully, we're still in April. You know, we got a few months for teams to adjust. So it's going to obviously, this is the time to do the big patch because you have now a couple months with your team. Uh, you know, so it's, it's going to be uh, enough time, I think, for them to figure out strategies, come up with hopefully some secret hidden strategies that are going to pull out in TI. But uh, ultimately, I think this was the right time to introduce all these items, the changes, and uh, I think it's going to overall be a really positive influence on the uh, not only the pub and pro scene, but also uh, as a viewer, as a spectator, to make these games more interesting for everyone involved. Yeah, and Eric was nice enough to, to pop down earlier uh, to the, the Facebook, I believe, or the Twitter, and drop us some questions, right? Mm -hmm. One of those two. Yes. Maybe both. Maybe both. Who knows? <laughs> um, and, you know, one of those questions th that you posed was, you know, what does this mean for TI5 and, you know, uh, how is the meta going to change? Are we going to see anything weird? Um, you know, I, I think that what's, like, most important about it is that so much has changed that you really can't expect... It really is almost like a hard reset. The teams have proven themselves up to this point. Great. You're on a roll. You guys have been practicing. Mm -hmm. Well, here's some new tools. Figure them out. Go to work. The teams that you know have maybe had trouble with this patch, here's a new set of tools. Now you can earn your way into a spot at the TI with, through the qualifiers. Go for it. And the teams, like, uh, I remember just watching an interview with Avost where he goes, you know what, we have not really been practicing, haven't had our nose to the grindstone. We have a new set of people together. This is the time to get together and, and practice and go hard. Absolutely, friend, because now everybody is on a completely sort of new level. Yeah. And I, I really think a lot of the things that we're going to be seeing um, are going to be a lot different than what we've seen previously. So mm -hmm. I, I'm very, very excited about this patch and its implications for TI5. Who isn't? And who isn't excited to hear about what we have to say about everything involved, right? Uh, Valve is, Puppy is, right? Confirmed. <laughs> they always are. Uh, so, this would be a great time yeah, to wrap this up. Uh, we are going to take a break, a small break. So if you're in the chat, please don't leave us. We will be with you shortly. But we are, like BDLM said at the beginning, we are breaking this up into a few different segments, easier to digest, easier to break down, so that way you can kind of jump into the content you want to if you're listening. Um, but, uh, yeah, any closing thoughts here? That's it. I'm just excited. I'm going to dive into the heroes next. Guys, go out there, grab yourself a drink, go potty. We'll be back in a minute. 